in this season, I want you to, and this, this will be the title of the message, focus on the opportunity over the opposition. Focus on the opportunity over the opposition. Okay? Uh, the first part of my text, and uh, for a great door of effectual. What is taking place? What is taking place? Uh, uh, God is preparing the church for victory. This new thing called the church. And this guy named Paul, is, is, is he had no idea. Uh, he's fighting, doing everything he can against this move. Had no idea God was going to take him and impart in him. Now you're going to be a leader in this move. Matter of fact, not a leader, but the main leader uh, in this move. And so what he is doing is he's making preparation. Uh, I think about Pearl. She was up here talking. That's, and that's where this uh, uh, close in this arena, what he's talking about. He, he's going to get an offering. I'm going through the areas, churches. Y'all going to have to help this poor church down here in Jerusalem. And he says, now, so I, I got to make my rounds. And he's telling them now, don't wait till the last minute to get the offering together. Go on and get the offering together. Uh, so, so when we come, we can pick that up. And, uh, and I love to stay with you. I love to stay with this. I love to study. He said, but I can't do it. He says, a great door and effectual is open to me. In other words, a great door of opportunity for ministry. He says, but I, I love this how it's phrased. He didn't say, but there are many adversaries. Because you know what happens when we say but. You only focus on the thing after but. He didn't say but. He said and. In other words, it come with the territory. You understand? So ain't no need you running. Ain't no need you complaining. Oh, I didn't know. Uh-uh, uh-uh. See, because what God does is he takes the same thing that Satan would use against you, and God is glorified through it. Let me show you what he did. Let me show you what he did to uh, Pharaoh. Let me show you what he did. Let me show you what he did to Pharaoh. Amen. God is setting us up for victory. He's setting us up that he's going to get glory. Amen. Look what he says in Exodus 14 and 16. 14, 16. This, this is what he told him. We, we're reading in the book of Exodus now. He says, but lift up thy rod. Moses had told the people, okay, God's going to do the fight. God said, ah. God said, uh-uh, uh-uh, this is already won. Here's what I need you to do. Verse 16, but lift up thy rod, stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I, look what God said. Who, he, he, did you see how emphatic he was? He said, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to harden the heart of the Egyptians. And they're going to follow you, and guess what's going to happen? The thing that you're afraid of, I'm going to get me honor on them. Come on, thank God. Do y'all see that? Amen. Come on, your, I'm telling you, your adversary don't stand a chance. And look what he says in verse 18. He said, and the Egyptians, I'm taking all these out, but the word is going to get back. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, who have gotten honor upon Pharaoh and upon the chariots and upon his horses. Lord Jesus, you see that little bit of trouble you had? God said, you better keep moving. And you focus on the opportunity, not the opposition, because God's going to get glory on that opposition. Come on, thank the Lord now. I'm trying to tell you, you got to see it, because I don't want you to be shaken, because there's going to be a shakening. There, there is a shakening right now. Amen? There's a shakening. See, and the, and, and, and the shakening is God pre pre uh, 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 preparing us to possess what he's promised us. What? God is preparing us to possess what he promised. In other words, God don't speak empty words. This is why you have to be definite and not always saying God is going to. Did he? Is he, is he, is he ain't. <laughs> you understand? Because if you always gonna, it'll always be at arm's length. Um, God's gonna, God's gonna, God's gonna. Uh-uh. You got to be direct, amen, and say what God says about you. Look what he said to children. Look what he said about children of Israel. Look what he said. Look at Deuteronomy 8. Look what he said about children of Israel. See, 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 what is he doing? There's a shaking and a shifting to prepare you for what he's promised. 
Deuteronomy 8 and 2. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee 40 years in the wilderness. Look why. To what? Humble thee. And to what? Prove thee. And to what? Know what was in thy heart, whether thou would keep his commandments or no. Look what he did. He humbled thee and suffered thee to what? Hunger, so he could feed you with manna, which you know not of, so that you would know that man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Come on, y'all see this? Amen. What is he doing? He's preparing you to possess the promises that he's made. And you got to know it. And when God makes a promise, the opposition show up. Show up. Why does the opposition show up? Because you ought to understand something. You ought to understand something. For you to possess what God's promised, you got to dispossess the enemy. You got to take something from him that he said is his, but God said it's yours. Oh, I ain't got no help in here today. I ain't got no help. You, you say what? Yeah, 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 yeah. The devil is counting on you to, to, to walk by sight, to walk by your senses and walk by your feelings. So the minute you get shook, you'll quit. That's the only hope he got. That's the only hope he has. Because what God is doing, God is putting you in place, amen, to possess what he has promised for you, amen. And the only hope that the enemy has, he got to get you to give it up, amen. But you can't give it up. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So, the Bible says in the second part of my text, uh, uh, 1 Peter 4, 12, here it says, Beloved, so now, think it not strange. Huh? Don't think it strange. You going in trying to take something from the strong man. Don't you know you got to bind the strong man? He just going, well, you, what, the Lord told you to come? Yeah, the Lord said come. Okay, I guess I'll go. I wish, <laughs> I wish. See, all that trial, all that temptation was to prepare you so that you know you got authority. Ain't nobody asking you nothing. Get out of here now in Jesus' name. That's what I'm saying. And you tell him till he go. You tell him till he loose it. Come on, are y'all with me, saints of God? Amen. You, you see, you got to speak to it. That's why God gives you authority. You speak to the tree. You speak to the mountain. You speak to the sickness. You speak to your leg. You speak to your back. You speak to your wallet. You speak to it. God already is giving you the promise. And poverty say, you might use a lie in Jesus' name. Glory to God. God has given me power to get well. In Jesus' name. Oh, you sick. I know. Amen. But it ain't going to last. Because what jump on got to jump off. Amen. Come on. Thank the Lord. He was wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, with his stripes, with his stripes, come on. Thank the Lord, saints. I am healed in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So think it not strange, 1 Peter 4, 12. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you through some strange thing happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, how are you going to feel? You're going to be glad about that. How? With exceeding joy. Come on, thank the Lord. <laughs> Woo! If you are reproached for the name of Christ, how do you feel? Happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God is where? It rests upon you. On their part, he's evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Come on, thank God. Woo! Yes, sir. You already know I'm coming out. You already know I'm going to win. You ought to know I'm coming out on top. If the, come on. Yeah, the battle is strong. Yeah, but guess what? It's already settled in Jesus' name. That's right. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. <laughs> come on, girl. You better help me. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Think it not strange. You just need to gird up your loins. You understand? You need to get it, get ready to get it, get it 
in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to see this. I want you, I'm going to give you probably about four things. I'm doing good on time. Four, let me see, is it four? Might be five, might be six. All right. <laughs> All right, I want to give you this. Because I don't want you to be a, a man. Oh, Lord, I was trying to do the will of the Lord. Oh, I was doing ministry. And all this happened. Uh, uh-huh, I knew you were in here. When he show up, I knew you were in here. Mm-hmm. Now, see, let me tell you one thing God has to do in the shaking. Let me, let me, let, let's, 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 let's do this first. Let's do this first. Let's do this first. All right, the first thing. The first thing you need to know is this, all right? No one is tempted above that they are able. No one. Huh? 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Very familiar. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There is no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. Say, but God. See, you see how it transitions. See what but does. But transitions. Oh, yeah, there, there it is. There it is. You going through what everybody go through or have the potential to go through, but look at the phrase. Look at the next phrase after the, after the colons. Look what happened. But God. <laughs> but God is faithful. Ain't that something? Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able but will with the temptation. Look now, look what God said. God said, oh, we're going to make good out of this thing. We're going to get something out of this thing. <laughs> he said, we're going to get something out of this thing. What Satan meant for evil, we're going to get something out of this. He said, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to what? Bear it. Go to God. See, God's trying to teach you how to move. God's trying to teach you how to have faith. See, don't say God tempted me when we're tempted and drawn away by our own lust. Amen? Praise the Lord. But when the enemy comes in or when there's a temptation, even if it's yours, God say, come on, we're going to fix this in this hour. That's what that shaking is about. See, part of the temptation, amen, is the shaking where God is trying to give us a chance. All these folk, you heard all these folk this morning talking about repentance. I declare you. I'm telling you. He said, if my people. See, we keep pointing to the world. God said, ah, <laughs> ah, uh, uh, uh. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. I like that. I don't know if the young lady read that. I'll forgive their sins. Oh, come on. Thank the Lord. Son. You say what? God said, oh, I want to forgive your sin. I want to forgive your sin. But if you persist in your sin, then I'm going to pull the cover off. That ain't the devil. That's the Lord. That's the Lord trying to save your life and trying to save your soul. So what does he do? Pull the cover off. <laughs> he said, uh-uh, it's out now. <laughs> uh-uh, it's out. It's out. That, that wasn't the devil. That was the Lord trying to save your life, trying to save your soul, and put you back where you support. Come on, thank God here. Are y'all with me? Listen to me. You talk to folk who have repented. Their ministries are stronger than they ever were in their life. Watch folk who repent. When repentance comes, now we ain't talking about, I'm sorry. No, you got caught. Uh-uh. I know you're sorry. <laughs> Why? Because you got caught. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> we get that. But we're talking about repentance. You understand? Godly sorrow. I made a mess of this thing. I don't know what I was thinking. Come on, thank the Lord. So are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That's how far God will go. What the what? I don't know what I was thinking. See, that's godly sorrow. See, that's godly sorrow. Amen? Praise the Lord. They ain't got to keep being repented of because I'm telling you now, now your life has changed where you walk in. When you begin to walk in hold the Jan said, I read the, read, I'm reading this Bible and make repent. Why? Because she's reading about God's plan. God is holy. She's reading about God's purpose. God is holy. When we read the Bible the first time, the whole year I repented. The whole year. 
Because, again, we believe certain things that are not true. Until God, uh, you allow, you, you read and allow God to give you revelation, you go, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It, it's not that it, 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 something is wrong. Amen? And it'll cause you to repent. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Number one. Amen. No one is tempted above that they are able. Number two. They overcame by the blood and their testimony. Amen? Revelation 12, 10, and 11, the war in heaven, the war with Michael and his angels, the war with Satan and his angels. He says, and I heard a loud voice, Revelation 12 and 10, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the brethren is cast down. What did he do? Accuse them before God when? Day at night. You see that lie. You see how he gets you trapped up. That joke gets you trapped up and say, see, 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 see. He the rat. Get you set up and then go, see, 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 see. There look, 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 look. There he is. <laughs> there she is right there. Uh, look, look, look. There she is. What you say about it? There she is. But aren't you glad that Jesus, glory to God, is at the right hand of the Father forever making intercession? Father, have mercy. Father, in Jesus' name, glory to God. Hallelujah. You put all the iniquity on them for me, on me in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus is forever making intercession till you get that thing right. Come on, saints of God. Come on, thank God for Jesus praying till you got it right. Go ahead and thank the Lord right now. That was Jesus. Satan had you dead to rights. He had you in his, in his crosshairs. But Jesus Christ was praying, mercy, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Woo. Hallelujah. Y'all see that? Amen. There he is. There he is. There he is. There he is. Glory to God. But look what the Bible says. He gives us the answer. What do you do? The Bible says that in verse 11, guess what happened? And how did they overcome? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Ooh, wave your hands, saints of God. Now, listen, here's something I got going, and you, 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 you'll hear about this. Uh, on the 15, I got y'all women coming together. Y'all, you ain't heard it yet, but it's going to come. Y'all going to come together. It's not going to be live stream. It's not going to be live stream. It's not going to be live stream because it's going to be real personal. We're going to let you get down. We're going to let y'all do what women do. What women do? Talk. <laughs> Young E. Cho said, he said, he said, I don't, he, he was, he's a uh, pastor, one of, he's probably dead now, but uh, one of the largest churches in the world out of South Korea. There's over a million people in church. And, uh, and, and he church in Japan, different places across the east. And they had over a million people in the church. He, he laughed. He said, I do not understand the Western pastor. The Western pastor, they don't use the women. He said, I don't understand. He said, the reason why my church is so big is because I use the women. He said, what do women do? They like to talk. He said, I let them talk. And everywhere they go, they talk. That's why the church is so big. He laughed. <laughs> and you see why the devil is so scared of y'all. Let me tell you what the devil scared of. He's scared of your testimony. Come on, thank the Lord. He's scared of your testimony. Here's where I was. Here's where I came from. Here's what I did. But look at God. Come on, thank the Lord, saints of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That joker's so scared till he got you scared. I don't want nobody to know. You don't show him the dark side. You don't show him the dark side. Every time somebody get around the dark side, you, you keep the good side to him. Dark side, but I got news for you. You got to tell what happened in the dark so that folk can see the light. Come on, thank the Lord. Are y'all hearing me, saints of God? Glory to God. And men, don't worry, I was coming too. See, see, let me tell you why. See, I'm telling you what Satan's afraid of. He's afraid of your testimony. He wants you to keep that thing cute. But guess what you got to do? 
you got to get with some folks and tell your story. Because your story is going to be God's glory. Come on, thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Revival is about to break out. Come on, thank God in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. See, he's afraid of your testimony. You can't tell everybody everything, but God knows you're going to tell somebody something. And when you start talking, guess what somebody's going to say? You know what? That sounds like me. See, the follow-through is going to be ministry, and it's going to start right here in the house. Come on, thank God, say, oh, Lord. Will you stand on your feet and just shout hallelujah? What? Glory to God. All it's going to cost you is your pride. But when you humble yourself, you can be assured that God will raise you up. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Go ahead and be seated in Jesus' name. Just put it on your calendar. That's going to be March 15th. Amen. It's Friday night. Glory to God. See, he's afraid of the blood. Remember, now let me remind you again the power of this blood all the way back then. I, I, I mean, you know, we can just do a whole series just on the blood, but I want you, but I want you to understand this part. Now, let me show you what the blood does. Come on with me. I want to give you a reminder. Uh, Exodus 12 and 23. All right. See, remember we're talking about going through the door. He said there's a great door of opportunity. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. But there are many enemies. Amen. There are adversaries. But God said, wait a minute. I got the answer for that. Number one, you're not going to be tempted above that which you're able. I'm going to work with you to get you right, to get you submitted, to see where you not, where, 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 see, see the places in your life what you haven't nailed down. The places where you haven't submitted. God said, that's what the shaking going to do. The shaking going to show you where you are. Not going to show you where they are. It's going to show us where we are. Amen. And then what he says is, they overcame by the blood. Let me show you the power of this blood. Exodus 12 and 23. The Bible says, for the Lord, this is Passover, the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptian. And when he sees what? The blood upon the lintel. And where else? On the two side posts, the Lord will what? Pass over the door and not suffer who? The destroyer to come in your house to smite you. Amen. And so the Lord, here he is, doing what he does. Amen. Doing what he does. Now, touch not mine anointing and do my prophet. No, come on. Come on. Y'all see this? Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? Y'all see this? So when the destroyer begin to come to your door, the, uh, he ain't got to see. He ain't recognizing nothing. He ain't got to see it. But when the Lord see the blood, the Lord say, <laughs> the Lord will stand over the door and say, keep it moving. Oh, you ought to thank it right there. Glory to God. Glory to God. Take your finger, take. Keep it moving. Come on. Why? Because of the blood. That's what I told COVID. You can't stay here. You can't stay here in Jesus' name because of the blood. You got to get out of here in Jesus' name. Amen? Praise the Lord. He's afraid of your testimony. Let's go to, let's go to first, the right testimony, Joshua uh, 1, 7. Joshua 1 and 7, and I think I'll do 8 as well, okay? Look what he says. Look what he says, all right? He's afraid of this testimony. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest what? Prosper whatsoever thou goest. Watch what he says. Here's the testimony. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. How often? Day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written in it. And look what's about to happen. For then shall thou make thy way, what? Prosperous, and then shall thou have, what? Ooh, come on, wave your hand in Jesus' name. See, what's happening is, you will have what your mouth says. Are y'all with me? And if the situation is not what God says, 
then you got to put the word of God in your mouth like a sword. Are y'all with me? Because the Bible says the word of God is alive. Amen? Sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide the joint, the marrow, the soul and the spirit, and even discern the intents of the heart, and even the invisible things, nothing is hidden from it. You got to take the word of God like a sword in your mouth, and you got to carve up that devil. You got to shape that circumstance, that situation, and bring it into compliance with the word of God. Come on, saints of God. We say too much about what they say. You know what they say? Oh, God. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know what they say? I don't care what they say. What does God say? That's where you have to stay. That's how you got to speak over your marriage. Men, guess what you got to do? Put the word on your wife and take, don't cut her with it, wash her with it. Come on, are y'all with me, saints of God? You got to wash her with, are y'all hearing me? You're supposed to wash her with the word of God and present her to yourself clean without spot or wrinkle. Do you understand? Don't fight the wrong battle in Jesus' name. Don't fight the wrong battle. Don't take it out on your children. Glory to God. Why? Because children on heritage of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. He said, uh, uh, come on, thank the Lord. Amen. They are a blessing from God in Jesus' name. And they are blessed to be able to come and help you in Jesus' name. If you keep your word, you keep your mouth on your children, you put the word of God on them. Teach them when they get up. Isn't that what Deuteronomy said? Teach them when they get up. Teach them when you go out. Teach them when you go out the gate. Teach them along the side. Teach them in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. That's the testimony. The testimony has to be the Word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Let me give you, let me give you at least one more. Amen. Let's see. Praise. All right. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Good. All right. Amen. Now watch this. Glory to God. Let's get ready to praise him, saints. Let me tell you why. See, because already, what do we know? Amen. That, 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 that I can't be tempted above that which I'm able. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I've overcome, and and what I got to understand, I overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Remember? 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 He don't have a chance. You got a door of opportunity. Amen? And the enemy going to raise up because you got to dispossess him. Guess what? You know the blood is on your side. Come on, thank God. Amen? Praise the Lord. All this stuff is happening around folk. Well, it's happening to them. Amen? But no, sir, you shall not come nigh my dwelling in the name of Jesus. The testimony of the Lord. Don't let that book of the law, then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Amen. Let me tell you what God did. Psalms 8 and 1. He ordained praise to steal the enemy. God Almighty. You say what? Ooh. Let's read it. Psalms 8, 1 and 2. The Bible says, O Lord. Our Lord, how excellent is thy name. Where? In all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens. Glory to God. And out of the mouth of babes and suckling, thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. You say what? He said, yeah, you know God takes the small thing, amen, to confound the strong. He take, the, he take the ignorant thing to confound the wise. And God said, uh-uh, I'm talking about a praise just from a child out of the mouth. Come on, y'all hear what I'm saying? Glory to God. A, a child ain't got revelation. All they got is hope. All they got is faith. And God is saying, that's where you praise from. We'll get too busy looking at the situation, trying to analyze, going back in our experience and everything else. No, sir. You got to have faith in God. You got to know that weeping might endure for a night, but joy is on the way. You got to know, glory to God, that you have been delivered from the wrath of God, and you've been delivered into the blessings of God. Are y'all hearing me say to God? Praise has been ordained to steal the enemy. Are y'all hearing me? What you talk about is what you praise. 
What you talking about most? You talking about what happened? You talking about the circumstance? You talking about the situation? Guess what you're doing? You're giving strength to it. Don't you know whatever you feed will grow? I wish I had faith like feed it then. <laughs> feed it. Whatever you feed, it'll grow. Feed your faith. Amen. Then begin to feed. When you begin to feed your faith, guess what you'll do? You'll begin to praise him. You'll begin to give him praise just like this, right? Come on, thank the Lord. Amen. You'll begin to praise him. Glory to God like this Psalms says right here. Lord Jesus, technology. Praise the Lord. Psalms 8, glory to God. Look what he says. Amen. When I consider, 8 and 3, when I consider the heavens and the work of thy fingers, the moon, the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou hast visited him. But come on, give God praise. Look what he says. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and have crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast made it him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, and have put all things under his feet. All the sheep and the oxen, yea, the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever path through the path of the sea, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. Can you thank him right now in Jesus' name? Glory to God. Thank him for his majesty. Thank him for his supremacy. Thank him that he is God. Thank him that he is the creator. Thank him that he's the maintainer. Thank him that he's a promise keeper. Thank him that he's a miracle worker. Thank him in the name of Jesus. When you begin to thank him, the enemy got to shut his mouth in Jesus' name. Why? Because you've exalted the Lord. I want to say this out of Ephesians 6 and 10. Glory to God. Finally, my brethren, amen, be strong in the Lord. Hello? Don't think it's strange you're about to go through a little something. Why? Because God has ordained you for ministry. And ministry is going in and dispossessing the strong man and possessing the promises. Are y'all hearing me? So don't think it's strange when he hiccup and kick up. Amen? Glory to God. What you need to do is finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes of the devil. Come on, thank God in Jesus' name. Shout the whole armor. You got to put on the whole armor. Say the whole armor. I mean this, saints of God. You got to put on the whole armor. You don't need just a little, little church. You don't need just a little Bible reading. You don't need a little prayer. You need what? Say the whole armor. Oh, no, you need the whole armor. Amen. Because the devil is scheming today. That joker is scheming. You need the whole armor, so you got to put on the whole armor. Why? Because we're not wrestling against flesh and blood only, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take up what? The whole armor that you may be able to, glory to God, to withstand when? In the evil day, having done all what? To stand. Amen. Glory to God. You see what's happening today. The reason why we don't have repentance is because of verse 14. He says, stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth. Ain't much truth. There's a whole lot of information, but ain't much truth at all. You got to sift through it to try to find some th truth in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Having your loins girded about with truth. Having the breastplate of righteousness. Let me tell you something, folks. Today, folk coming up with their own righteousness. Here's the word of God, but here's what I believe. That's your righteousness. Amen. Righteousness is of God. You got to believe what the Lord said. Who report shall you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. That's the righteousness of God. Glory to God. Heaven on the breastplate of righteousness. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You, folk are running to and fro talking about everything. But who's sharing the peace of God? Who's sharing the peace of God? Who's talking about the peace of God? You know you're in a battle, verse 16. So guess what? Above all, take the shield of faith. Why? Because think it not strange when you come into these situations, amen, when these trials and temptations come, you're going to need the shield of faith because you need to be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Glory to God. 
Amen. Take on the helmet of salvation. Say the helmet of salvation. See, this is why folks are losing their mind because their head ain't covered with salvation. Salvation is the only thing going to keep you today. Why? Folks, understand, it, this, this is the center uh, for your mind, your will, and your emotion. This is the center, and this is where Satan is attacking. Amen. God says, hold on, I didn't give you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. The only way you can have a sound mind in this era, listen to the crazy politicians. Social media and all that foolishness. And everybody's after something. Everybody wants something. Are y'all hearing me, saints of God? Amen. Guess what you got to do? You need to be born again. You need to be born of the Spirit. You need to be born of the water. You need to be saved. You need to be baptized. Amen. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Then you got to take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then not only that, praying. Somebody say praying. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching therefore unto all perseverance and the supplication of all the saints. 